Adam Savage here in the cave for Tested uh, with a build that I did over the weekend. I sometimes feel guilty when I come in on a Saturday or Sunday and do a build to satisfy myself and don't film it. I feel like I'm leaving money on the table. I don't mean real money, I mean like narrative money, storytelling money. Over the past couple of years, I've been talking on Tested about how I've been getting more serious about carpentry. And getting more serious about carpentry has meant that um, I've fallen in love with some of the finer staplers that the world has to offer, like a 22 gauge stapler. Mm, mm, mm. This thing is so beautiful. Um, and I've always used a T50 stapler, but only recently did I find out there's a pneumatic version of this. Holy hell, it has changed my life. And then I looked and realized I had like seven or eight staplers. And they were just kind of sitting on the shelf among all my other cordless tools and they're mostly pneumatic. Some of them are cordless, some of them are corded. It was a mess. And this is one of the things I do in the shop. I wait until I see a, a backlog of something or a category of interest that requires more readily accessible set of tools. That's exactly what it is. And in this case, I realized that my weekend build was going to be a rack to hold all of my staplers in one location with their staples and nails so that I could do my woodworking more intuitively. And here it is. The build was a little less straightforward than you would think for such a simple object. Oh, oh, before I get started, this is the T50 pneumatic stapler. This replaces this. And I am so happy about it. I once built a padded cell we had no money, so I did the stitching of the padding without even canvas. We just had one inch white foam and I did the stitching with a staple gun. Days and days of stapling in this room that got quieter and quieter as I covered all six surfaces in white foam. And my hand, my arm was like, it looked like a Tour de France cyclist's leg by the end of this project. It was disgusting. It was just like, like, tet, like Tetsuo. Yeah, Blah, like that. Anyway. I'm very happy about this. So, let's take a look at the structure of this. It's pretty straightforward. We've got three big staplers in the top, uh, two nail guns and a, a, actually all three nail guns in the top. Staplers here in the middle. Uh, some other cordless tools down below because I saw that I could take care of some of that storage without too much difficulty and it would still be near all the other hand tools. To build this, I used some really nice half inch ply for the four or for the five shelf surfaces, um, but I mounted it using this inexpensive uh, MDF, medium density fiber board. Um, I stapled from the side and glued everything so that it would have real cohesion. And I cut out these little notches for the shelf dividers. I'm a really big fan of that kind of shelf divider. It makes your build a little easier and I, I don't like making things permanent. I like them to be adjustable if I can. So you'll notice this is a, a thing I like to do in my builds is removable shelf dividers. Now, I did this mapping out, right? I laid all these staplers out on a workbench and I kind of made some measurements and then I figured out uh, I mapped out these five pieces of half inch ply, right? This top one had these two notches and that matched these two notches, but then this piece isn't the same as this because it's got these four notches underneath. They match these, but then this has these two notches underneath that, right? It's a little bit like a puzzle. Once I had this all mapped out, I cut out my five pieces of half inch ply and then I set my table saw to a depth and I dadoed it. I, I could have used a dado blade. Uh, I mostly just fed it through, I mostly, no, I completely. I fed it through using the standard width of the table saw blade and uh, moving the fence about uh, an eighth of an inch, just slightly less than the width of the blade each time and eventually cutting out those notches. And then the nice thing about that is you can do the two facing surfaces at the same time and then you know they all match.
when I was finished with all five of these pieces, right? It's a very simple build. It's really, really straightforward. There's five, six, seven, eight pieces of wood. There's not much you can do to screw it up, but I found a way. <laughs> Once I had all these pieces, I set them out here and I used my table saw, just a nice flat table, to start to assemble them. I assembled them, I glued them, I stapled them. It's a nice rigid structure. I load it up. Okay, now it's time for me to put in the wheels. I had these nice locking casters that I picked up on eBay a few months ago. I attached them and then I put the finished project on the floor and it's time to go get all the staplers and the hand tools and put them in here. And that's like the most fun part of a project. That is like, it's like the weathering, right? I've always said weathering is my favorite part of like a prop, well, of a shop tool, my uh, shop tool or shop storage system. Loading it is like, ugh, it's a deeply pleasurable experience. So I pick up a stapler, I put it where it can go and I pick up one of the nailers and I'm standing there looking at the cart and I realize the nailer I'm holding in my hand doesn't fit anywhere in the cart. So what the hell happened? What did I, what did I do wrong? It's a classic mistake. Um, this shelf has four levels. One, two, three, four. And you could ascribe each of those numbers a value, which would be that distance. That's distance one, that's distance two, that's distance three, that's distance four. What I did was I carefully put this together where that was distance four, that was distance three, that was distance two, and that was distance one. So the dividers were correct, but the heights were all wrong. Thus, I could fit exactly like two tools in this entire shelf. And then I realized, oh crap. I, I was shooting this all with time lapses on my phone. I felt so productive. <laughs> and I thought, this is a really easy build. We'll just get it done and be back home by dinner time. And just as I thought I was done, just at that last moment, I realized I had to take the whole thing apart and put it back together again. So I set up one last time lapse and filmed myself going through the ignominy. It only took about 25 minutes. But even though it only took 25 minutes, just know, you can actually see me in one part of the video, like grab my head like, Argh! It's such a grind to push through. It's never gonna take as long as you think it is. It never takes as long as I am afraid it's going to. And it's never as bad as I think it's going to be. Nonetheless, girding my loins to take the energy to go do the thing I thought I was done with one more time, it's rough. It takes a little bit out of you. But 30 minutes later, I put it back together correctly, re-stapled it, re-glued it, put in all the dividers, put in all the tools, and put my staples and nails bin right on top. This is where it belongs. This, this is totally hyper useful to me now, and I'm excited about what it means for my carpentry. It's not quite done. I will say it's not quite done. I do plan to have better storage for staples and nails. And it may be that I actually put a little drawer at the top of each one of these for the staples and nails that ascribe to that specific tool. I haven't yet decided, but that would be pretty cool. Cause then you could pull the whole drawer out. Drawer comes with you. The trick is you've got to have all the sizes available. I still haven't fully worked it out in my head, but I will. Thanks for watching 100% of whatever you just watched. That's awesome. We get to add that to our completion rate. You deserve something. You deserve a t-shirt for all your hard work. Follow the link below and buy yourself a tested official t-shirt.